Do you have trouble lifting supers off your hive? A 10 frame deep full of honey can weigh 35 to 40 kilos. Even an 8 frame medium can weigh 30 kilos. I don't know what it's doing to your back, but I know what it's doing to my back and I don't like it one little bit. In this video, we're going to talk about horizontal hives. No more lifting heavy supers, you'll be lifting one frame at a time. Easy. G'day, Mike from the Hawkesbury Beekeepers Club and today we're going to talk about horizontal hives, in particular the Long Langstroth Hive, also known as the Long Lang. But first, what is it that makes a good home for bees? As beekeepers, we're all familiar with the Langstroth Hive. We know that it's a very successful design for housing bees. It's been in use with very little change since the Reverend Lorenzo Lorraine Langstroth designed it in the mid 1800s. From a bee's perspective, a Langstroth hive with brood boxes and supers is like the inside of a hollow tree. It provides protection from the elements and a cavity that they can regulate humidity and temperature to raise brood. We know from studies that they like to find a cavity of 40 litres or so and often at a level above the ground of up to 3 metres. We also know that bees are highly adaptable and they will take up residence in just about any cavity. I've done cutouts from a variety of places including the walls of buildings and trees and fallen trees. Anything from a height of 100 mil off the ground to over 7 metres off. This colony filled up the space between the ceiling and the floor above, so they expanded horizontally. Let's look at how a colony typically lays out their space in nature. So we know our bees will be happy in a horizontal hive. What options are there? Here we see a top bar hive. They're very simple and cheap to make. They comply with our legal requirement to have removable frames to facilitate inspections. The bees make natural foundationless comb attached to the top bar. It's a bit like a Langstra frame without the sides and bottom bar. Without the support of foundation though for honey extraction, you're limited to crush and strain. For one or two hives, that's probably not a problem. Plus, you'll get quite a bit of wax. They can be prone to crazy comb, though, if left unsupervised. I'm set up to harvest honey mechanically using this electric extractor and also flow frames. So I need something to handle Langstroth frames. Drum roll, please, for the horizontal Langstroth hive, or Long Langs for short. These take a bit more effort to design and build, but well worth it. It can be a simple box with a removable lid, just like a normal Lang. Or it can be an architectural masterpiece with a hinged roof and design, or anything in between. As long as we stick to the principles of a bee-friendly cavity and bee space, we can create just about anything. Like all things beekeeping, there are plenty of opinions on how a long lang should be designed. 
all those opinions come from a wide variety of experiences. But in my opinion, there's not one right way. And I don't even think there's one best way. It's worth looking at all the opinions, all the options, and figure out for yourself what you want to do and give it a go. I'll talk about some of the options here now and where I'm going to go with my build. My first question is how long do I make it? That is, how many frames will it accommodate? Most long lengths are made to fit between 30 and 40 frames. The one you see here is well over 60 frames. My choice is made by the available length of the Golden Cypress I'm using, which is limited to a length of a bit over a metre. That means I'll be sticking to about 30 frames. If you're currently running 8 frame lengths, that's about 4 boxes high. Plenty for me. But you don't have all four boxes on at once, right? Well, you don't do that with a long lang either. We use a follower board in a long lang to create a movable end of the cavity. As the colony expands, you move the follower board to follow the space to add in extra frames as the colony expands. And if there's a flow on, and you've already fully expanded and they want to fill more, then all you do is take some frames out, harvest, and then you've given them more space. What about the entrance? There are different views on where to put them. Some put two or three space out on the long side of the box, blocking the ones that come after the follower board. The idea is that this saves the bees some work getting from the entrance to the honey stores. It's a bit like having a top entrance in a standard lane. I'm going with an entrance on the short side of the box. Some people say it's not natural for the entrance to be on the side of the comb and that it'll affect their ability to regulate humidity and temperature. In all the cutouts I've done, I found that the bees have laid out their comb in all sorts of directions with relation to the entrance. One log that I opened had all the comb lined up exactly as I'm intending to do with my long line. It was a strong colony, over a one and a half metres long in the log to queen exclude or not to queen exclude? That is the question. On the exclude side, the argument is that it prevents the queen going through to the honey super. The other side suggests that the queen won't cross a honey boundary. So if there's a frame of honey, she will just work the existing brood comb. Now I started beekeeping with flow hives. They come with an excluder, so I've only known excluders. Even on my standard langs, I use excluders. But I'm open though, so I thought I'll use excluders on one long lang and I'll have another long lang with no excluders, just to see what happens. And this is what a queen excluder in a long lang looks like. What about screen bottom boards? Some people swear by solid bottoms, others wouldn't be without their screen boards. I have to admit, I've only ever used screen bottom boards, but with all the small hive beetle that I've caught on the tray, I'm inclined to stick to them. But I don't have to have a full length. I'll just have it under the brood five to 10 frames. See what happens. Some long langs have a lid like normal boxes, but without the inner cover. When you remove the lid, all the frames are exposed at once. I don't like that, and I don't think the bees do either. Here's a clever way around that. Each of these cover slats are about three to five frames wide. When you inspect your bees, lift only one slat at a time for the least disruption to your colony. There's a meshed ventilation slat. There's also a slat with holes for a top feeder. Of course, to do that, we need to have a roof deep enough to fit the feeder. So I'll build mine with a hinged roof similar to this one. Well, that's it for this introduction to horizontal hives. To summarise, I'll be building a long lang to accommodate about 30 frames. I'll have the entrance on the short side of the box with a screen bottom board for the first five to 10 frames or so in the brood section. It'll have a hinged pitch roof to accommodate feeders when I need them and slats over the top of the frames so that when I inspect them, I'll only be exposing two or three frames at a time. 
In the next video, I'll discuss construction options. Mostly, I'll bring you into my workshop to see the construction of my long lane. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. If you already have a long lane, perhaps you can share some pictures for the next meeting. But for now, cheers.